What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with the 60th installment of Black Girls on Television. And we got our full lineup back, you guys. Thank God it's Thursday. Scandal, how to get away with murder. The reviews, let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, so Scandal is back, and I'm going to say it for you. It's going to be a difficult year. <laughs> It is going to be so hard to sit and watch Olivia get on our fucking nerves for the whole season. I mean, it's obvious that they're trying to make her be so so much of an egomaniac that the fall is that much worse. But I just, I was like, oh my God. This is going to be a whole season of long speeches of power and feeling herself. And she's, you know, I am lady, hear me roar. And... I know Shonda loves those type of speeches. I hope she doesn't do them all fucking season. You know, it was different when it was Daddy Pope. I, I, I don't know exactly what... Okay, I'm starting the review off wrong, right? <laughs> I should be talking about how glad we are Scandal is back. It's the final season. I am glad that it's back. I am glad it's the final season. But y'all, it's just... <laughs> it's gonna be a lot. All right, so the show opens with this new talk show host. Okay, no more Sally, I suppose. We got this new guy, and uh, he is talking to a senator about uh, Millie and uh, Olivia's first initiative for, you know, uh, Millie's first 100 days in office. They're trying to get free education, free college education um, in the United States for everybody. And, of course, the senator does not agree with this initiative. Okay, we see Olivia, she's strolling down the hall, she is feeling herself, okay, she finally made it to the White House. When she gets to her office and she goes in, she sees her assistant, her assistant nods at her and she's just like, oh, okay, he's here, good. And who is he? Well, he is the senator that was on this talk show. The senator was like, hey, I know you invited me here and I show enough appreciated and everything, but uh, I'm not voting yes on you guys' free education initiative. You know what, Olivia says, yes, you are, okay, because I got some shit in this envelope and I'm going to blackmail that ass, okay? Your wife ain't going to like it and she's going to leave you and it's going to be this big problem for you. So, how are you going to vote? And uh, it didn't take long for her to sway his vote. He will be voting yes. So now when we see Melly and Olivia and Cyrus, how's that for a dream team? If you told me six seasons ago that they would be the ones running the White House, even though they had been running it all that time, but actually being on the front line, I would have told you it was crazy, okay? But anyway, here we are. Cyrus is the vice president, Melly's the president, Olivia's the chief of staff, okay? They got seven yes, they got five no's. They got to work on those no's. Okay, well, you know what? We're going to let Olivia take the... Um, the forefront and get on TV. Okay, Cyrus, as the vice president, you, you go work your magic on the hill. Okay, Cyrus doesn't really want to do that, but what can he do? He has to listen to his president, Melly. In the meantime, we see Quinn Perkins and Associates. That is the name of the new um, operation that Olivia has bequeathed on to Quinn. It's no longer Olivia Pope. She's changed the name. David doesn't even think that's smart. Okay, they're trying to press David for some clients. And David is telling them no. While they're arguing back and forth, in walks this woman who has lost her father in Bashwan. Okay, I, I, I guess I'm saying it right. Bashwan or Bashwan. They don't know where he is, but she knows something's wrong. Because he usually would keep in contact with her. So, hey. They've got their first client. Jumping back to Olivia's dinner time, she goes and has dinner with her father, okay? And um, it's interesting how the role has reversed, and she is now her daddy, and her daddy is now her. Her daddy is paranoid that she's watching him, his every move. You know, she's trying to assure him that she is not. She's very much matter-of-fact and, you know, kind of like, I'm running things now. Um, and he recognizes it. And he just tries to give her a little bit of a warning. Listen, there's a day of reckoning coming for you. I know you're feeling it. I know you big on the power and you're feeling good and you in the White House and you and Melly and all. Y'all about to do it. But I'm telling you, the fall is going to be swift and it is going to be harsh. She says that she and Melly are a team. They are going to do everything together and that they are going to change the ways of the White House. Changing it for the better. And he says, oh, you think so, huh? You think you got it all together? Listen, there's going to be a day when you're going to have to make some choices. It's going to be one choice over here and it's going to be the next choice over there. And you might not like neither one of them, but you're going to have to be forced to make a choice. And it's going, I'm just telling, I'm just letting you know, dear daughter. It's going to be rough, okay? You can't have everything your way. Definitely can't have it all. And she says, watch me. 
Next, we see Liv debating on that same talk show that I told you about at the beginning of the video with the gentleman. He is, um, uh, I, I think he's like a Latino-American gentleman, good-looking. Even while they're arguing back and forth on this education bill, it's obvious that there is some sexual tension there. Right when she's trying to get on a roll and really debate him about this free education, he cuts her off. That's it. We don't have any more time. Thank you for joining our show. She smirks to herself. Okay, she didn't win that battle, but baby, you ain't gonna win this war. Quinn and Abby, they're trying to find out where old man might be, okay? Your regular spy antics that they do, you know, surveillance cameras breaking into computers that got hooked on the job. They suspect that the father that is missing is CIA, okay? But they don't know for a fact, so Quinn takes the file and the information that she has, and she goes over to Olivia's house that night, okay? Olivia doesn't let her in. What do you want, Quinn? She was just like, hey, we've been working on this case, and... uh we got somebody missing. We think he's the CIA. You know, he's in Bashwan. And Olivia is just like, give me the file. Okay. Quinn's like, let me in. She's like, nope, you can't come in. You know why she can't come in? Because Jake is there. She's sleeping with Jake. When she takes the file and closes the door on Quinn, we see Jake getting back dressed. Okay. I guess they just finished in a session. She tells Jake she got a job for him. Okay. I'm assuming she's talking about this information that Quinn just told him. He has a little bit of problem with that. Okay. I guess he tired of her ordering him around and everything considering he's jumped in the bed with her, okay? You guys are bed buddies, brothers and sisters. <laughs> what would Daddy Pope think of his kids back in the bed? But whatever, Jake is in his feelings, and she was just like, listen, we said we were going to do this, but you cannot make it difficult. We said we would make it easy and comfortable. Stop making it hard. Let's finish up the round. I thought you was just finished, but I guess not, okay? And he snatches her up, and I guess they're about to have another session. Next day, Jake tells her that the guy is CIA. And, um, hey, they got him. We got to kill him. Olivia was like, kill our own? Absolutely not. And he was like, he is not our own anymore. They have him, and they are going to terrorize him, and they are going to torture him, and they're going to get information out of him that is important to the United States. There's nothing else we can do. We got to kill him. Okay, Olivia doesn't want to do that. So she says, let me think about it. He's like, I'm telling you, Olivia, you got to do it. And she was just like, let me think about it. And he was just like, oh. you know, she looks turmoiled and troubled. And he tells her, listen, it's going to get easier. She says, what, killing people? And he says, no, be in command. Now we see Cyrus, he is meeting with uh, one of the senators of the Democrats, okay, and he is trying to convince her to vote yes on this education bill. The lady says, listen, that free education thing was supposed to be the Democrats' ticket, not the Republicans. I'm not voting right now because I feel like we could use this four years down the line. Don't you want to be president? You can save this monumental bill um, for when you get on the ticket. Okay, I want you to think about that, okay? And she did put a little something on Cyrus's head because we know that Cyrus has, uh, you know, he's always had the ambitions of being um, the president. So I guess Cyrus has got something to think about. Quinn tells the lady that hired her office that, uh, yep, we found your daddy and he is in Bashwan, okay? And um, that's all she tells her. You know, Charlie says, well, why didn't you tell her that, you know, he was CIA and he was a spy and he got kidnapped? She was like, listen, she just hired us to find out where he is and that's all we did. We're not telling her any of the rest of that, okay? And Charlie doesn't like that. Are we always going to be lying? Are we always going to be, you know, cloak and dagger and not telling the full truth and all that stuff? <laughs> Charlie, remember what you do, okay? Not only do you work for Quinn, but you are still part of B3. What, what the fuck is it? B16, B3, B316. Y'all know what it is. Why all of a sudden Charlie and his feelings? Huck, because he already know how this goes, okay? He shows up in the shadows of Olivia's uh, apartment, okay? When she's coming home one night, you know, he goes and he says, uh, you know, you're going to kill this guy. And Olivia was just like, what? Okay, he's like, you gonna kill him? She's like, well, what makes you think that I'm gonna kill him? And he's like, listen, I know how this goes. I used to work with B-16. You know, they deserve to at least have a funeral. This girl looking for her father and everything, you know, so then he didn't stress out Olivia and made her feel guilty. <laughs> what about when he went and disappeared back into the little um, apartment across the way from I said, do the nigga live over there? Like, <laughs> how do you just get a key and just walk in the door and just disappear? on the other side I was just like well, I'll tell you that Huck and Olivia they are something else but now that he has made her feel guilty about it she goes and she decides that she is not going to kill him that they are going to bring this man home and Jake feels like it is a mistake we cannot do that 
he needs to be killed it's already a done deal like he could already have been told him some shit and she reminds him listen i don't give a fuck what you think jake because i am in command here and you're gonna do what the fuck i say in the meantime cyrus and Liv are still trying to secure these education you know yes on the free education votes so Liv you know, all huffed up and full of power, is having a little meeting with Cyrus, and she was telling him how, you know, Melly has this meeting that she has to do, and I got some shit that I gotta do, so you go do some old menial little job that don't mean nothing, okay, go on about your business and get out the way, and let us handle what we gotta handle over here, you know, Cyrus is just like, you want me to go talk to, I don't know what it was, was it some Girl Scouts or some shit? And uh, she was just like, uh, do you have a problem with that? You say you work for this office, you want to work for Melly, you got to do what's needed and necessary, right? Okay, so you're going to take your ass down there and, and uh, talk to the people unless there's something wrong with that. And he says, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what about Cyrus's new little look? I was like, I don't know, Cyrus. Maybe you might want to just slick it back down. He look a little frazzled and crazy to me so then we see melly meeting with the bashwanian uh official and melly's reminding him how the countries have had good relationships with each other and how it would be a shame if everything got fucked up now because you know it could be sanctions i mean it could it could go all the way up to uh you know war and he kind of is condescending to her and he was like listen i know you just got here and you don't really know how everything goes you probably don't know if you got good or bad intelligence and again it's not your fault you just don't know better okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna sit here and continue to talk to you and i'm gonna pick up this tea and i'm gonna drink it okay i'm gonna humor you and then i'm gonna get on about my business all right melly looking at him like ain't this about a bitch now jake is still mad that olivia has decided not to kill the man and try to bring him back home again you need to send somebody over there to kill him and you know olivia's just like no now we see Melly, and Melly is fully the graceful president of the United States. Melly finally looks happy. She is settled. She is in this position. This is rightfully where she should be. And uh, she's rushing off from meeting to meeting, and she sees Cyrus in the hallways. Oh, Cyrus, Cyrus, Cyrus. Okay, I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to you, but I just really want to thank you for being here and working with me. Okay, you have been with me every step of the way. You haven't forsaken me. You haven't done anything to trip me up. I mean, look, we are working together. Can you believe it? All that that time that we have been at each other's throats now we're working together and we can be friends i really appreciate you i mean she is just really giving him all these accolades <laughs> accolades you know shout out to nini he's looking at her like wow okay she really does mean that okay they don't just have me around here as the minion okay maybe i do have a spot in here in this office so I would think that that conversation that he had with Melly, although it was short, it did help him in some future decisions that he needs to make. Now, I told you guys about the sexual tension between uh, Liv and the uh, TV host. Well, the TV host shows up at her office, okay, and he wants to take her to dinner, okay, and she was just like, um, it's the middle of the day. And, you know, he tries to say some cute little something like, we can start now, but, um, Livia can't be bothered. She got a text and she's happy about it. Okay, so she got to go. She rushes in there. She tells Melly, hey, Melly, listen, we got a yes, another yes vote on that free education. And Melly was like, good. Okay, as far as the spy is concerned, we're going to kill him. All right, and she was just like, kill him. No, we can't kill him. And then uh, Melly was just like, yeah, we're going to kill him. Okay, and then she, when Olivia turns around, she sees Jake is in there. Okay, and she was just like, you made your case. And then Jake gave me his case, okay? And uh, I'm going to go with what Jake says. So we're going to kill that ass, and I don't need nothing else from you. Now, you know, Liv is mad because Jake has gone behind her back. So next scene, we see them in the Situation Room, Melly and all of her staff, and they are watching on screen um, the um, killing on this spy over there in Bashwan, okay? At the same time, we see Olivia. She is on the phone. She's got to have a meeting with um, the official, all right? The official comes, the, the official from Bashwan. He comes over there, and uh, she gives him this iPad, and it is a video of his kids playing on the swings, okay? She's basically telling him, we're going to kill your kids if you don't turn over the spy and let us have them back here to the United States. He tries to call her bluff, but you know Olivia, even though I don't think that she would have done it, but she was just going with her gut. She had Huck. Huck had the gun trained right on, her, on his kids, and Huck was like, okay, Liv. All right, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. He's on the phone with Olivia, and he's telling her, I'm going to shoot these kids. I'm going to kill these kids. Are you sure that's what you want to do? She's doing a countdown, and finally the official says, okay, okay, okay. 
we'll give them to you. So then he immediately calls and he moves the, the spy um, at the same time while Jake and Melly are in there in the situation room watching um, them about to kill the spy. So they bust in the room and the spy is not in there. Okay. And Melly was like, well, where is he? They're like, well, he looks like he's been moved. That's when Olivia comes into the situation room and she says, here, Melly is phone for you. And Melly's like, I ain't got time for no phone. She was like, no, you might want to talk to this person. Okay. So the person on the phone tells her that, um, the spy was just delivered to the American embassy and he was unharmed. So they aborted the mission. They didn't kill the spy. They got their spy back and Olivia has saved the day. Now, remember I was telling you that Cyrus had to make a decision and that um, the conversation that he had with Millie helped him? Well, that's when he goes and talks to that senator again about, you know, maybe him having ambitions of being a president in four years and saving the vote till then. And he gives this long, convincing Shonda Rhimes speech about, you know, how they got to do it now because it needs to happen now. And, you know, he's doing this and he means it is free education and blah, 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 blah. So the lady was just like, oh, okay. And then she calls Olivia and she tells her, hey, we was testing to see if Cyrus was full of shit, if he had any ambition, if he was going to stab Millie in the back and try to be president in four years. And it looks like he is 100% in. So you don't have to worry about Cyrus. Okay. So that was what that it was all about. Olivia was just testing his loyalties. As far as the spy, he's back in the United States. He's reunited with the daughter at uh, Quinn Perkins and Associates. Okay, they hugging, they happy. Okay, Quinn has solved her first case. Liv goes home and she tells Jake, hey, listen, I got a bone to pick with you. And he says, you know what? I'm sorry. I know I was wrong going behind your back. And she was like, no, you weren't wrong. You were comfortable. I let you get in my bed. I let you think that you could double cross me. I let you forget who I am. I'm Olivia Pope. And I'm big deal up here in town, okay? I am command, I am the head, I am the foot, I am the everything. You sleeping in the bed with me, you obviously forgot that, so uh, I'm going to have to leave you alone. I'm going to have to cut this whole thing, okay? Quit fucking with you. This is completely over. You need to take it on home to your wife. I was like, child, I forgot Jake was even married. I said, that Olivia knows she love her old married man, old loose ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit now the scene that really really got on my nerves is when we see Melly um and Liv they finally have this showdown about uh Liv kind of going behind Melly's back and overstepping her okay so um you know Melly was just like listen next time you do that shit you gonna be out and Olivia was just like honey this <laughs> What you think this is, baby? This ain't your office. This office is for the people. And you all worried about men and they telling you what the fuck to do around here when you got the head bitch in charge right behind you. I'm supporting you. I got your back. Bitch, don't be thinking about all these other men around you because you're going to fail every time. I am the woman. I am the person. I am the strength. I am the... I said... I was just like, Lord, I can't take it. I cannot take it. We gonna get all season of that, okay? For some reason, it does not fall the same way that it fell from Daddy Pope's mouth. It doesn't do the same with Olivia. So I was just like, ah. Uh. And then what really gets on my nerves is, you know, people always deflect and defer to um, Olivia. And Millie's a fucking president. I mean, you know, I understood what Olivia was trying to tell her, you know, a little bit. But Olivia fully believes that that is her White House. And I was just like, Melly girl, you got this headstrong ass, drunk on power bitch, you know, trying to run your show over there. <sighs> I mean, I know that if it wasn't for Olivia, Melly wouldn't be there. But, oh, she is just, she is tiring. Child, I can't. But Melly agrees. Yes, it is our office. Us women. The men can't take it. Okay, they gonna hate us the whole way, but girl, it's me and you. I said, okay. And then lastly, we see Liv, she finally gone and hook up with the TV host, okay? As if we didn't think it wasn't gonna happen. All right, Liv got to have her some sort of D in her life. And, um, hey, this man wants it. She got a P to give, so why not? <laughs> I tell you, it's gonna be rough this season, y'all, but we gonna make it. And then how to get away with murder. I tried to figure out a way to try to organize this show a little bit better today but i i just can't so i'm gonna be jumping back and forth to the future to the back to the present to the going back. 
it's going to be a lot of that, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, so the show opens at 9.01 a.m., okay, and, and um, we see the counselor. He's on the phone. He is convincing someone that they're wrong, and we don't know what any of that means, but he got to go because Annalise is there, okay? That is his client. So she's talking to him, and he says, are you tired? And she was just like, yeah, I am tired. He says, what, you not sleeping? Are you drinking again? And she was like, no, I'm not drinking, okay? Actually, I got my first case the lady that I shared the cell with and now that she has her license back she is going to work on getting this woman out of jail you guys remember the lady that was in jail with her that saved her from getting her ass beat that's when we see Annalise at the jail and she is talking to the woman how she is going to be her new lawyer and that she's doing it for free the lady was just like girl you crazy but uh, okay if that's what you want to do then fine then we see Laurel, and she's Googling shit about offshore shelters and, you know, hiding money and all kind of other stuff. She's so preoccupied, she gets a text message from Michaela, and Michaela says, don't forget to shower. Okay, and she jumps up like, oh my gosh, she's got to be somewhere. Well, where does she have to be? We see the kids, they are at this law firm um, job fair, um, and all of them are trying to get jobs. Remember, Annalise has fired them all and turned them off to be free and make their own way. So they are there. Laurel comes bringing up the rear, okay, looking a mess. We even see the Indian kid. What is his name, you guys? I don't remember his name, so this whole video is going to be the Indian kid. I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody. I just don't remember what the man's name is. He's there. He's hating as usual, okay? The only reason why any of these people might be even interested in talking to you is because they want to know the tea on Annalise. So he's trying to get them off their game. Okay, and speaking of Annalise, we see her in court, and she is arguing for her new client. She's trying to get an extension, and uh, the judge ain't hearing it, okay? It ain't my fault that you just jumped in on this case right now, okay? That shit is starting tomorrow. So it was a try. Didn't work, but Annalise is just going to try to do whatever she can do, okay? When she's walking out of court, uh, she sees Bonnie walk in, and she was just like, Bonnie, girl, t today is not the day. Right now is not the time, and Bonnie was just like, oh, I, I know that, <laughs> Okay? not trying to talk to you all right the judge says okay can i have the next ada come up and bonnie says that's me and annalise turns around and look like bitch I, did you really go over to the other side like that yes annalise she did it like that can you believe it miss winterbottom with old cold ass <laughs> So then we go back to Annalise and her counselor, and, you know, it's back to the president again, and he's asking her, um, you know, I don't want to know about the case. you telling me all about the case. I want to know about you. That's why you're here, right? And she was just like, listen, don't try to guide the narrative. I'm here. I'm talking to you. You listen to whatever I feel like talking about. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? You, the counselor, you listen to what I have to say? And he says, oh, excuse me. Take all the time you need. So then we go back into the past, and we see Bonnie, and uh, she's talking to real nice Nate. He's just like, oh. What do you and Annalise have cooked up, okay? Y'all trying to come here and work here and find out something. Listen, I don't want to be no part of nuns of that. And she was just like, I don't work for Annalise anymore. And he was just like, whatever. He kind of walks off in the huff like, bitch, you guys ain't fixing to trip me up again. Now, the kids at this job fair, you know, they kind of having some problems. You know, all of the people there are asking them about their academics and how it looks like their grades have kind of suffered. Okay, I was like, that's because they've been too busy for the last three years killing people. <laughs> that's why. Everybody is trying to come up with reasons why it happened, okay, and how they did recover some of their grades and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so now it's looking a little dicey for them. We're not sure if they're going to get hired. And then we see Annalise, and she is having a problem with the girl that she is trying to represent, okay? This woman is broken. She's a drug addict. She's been in jail all of her life, okay? She just is hard to work with. The lady tells her, listen, I've been in this fucking cycle all my life, in and out of jail, okay? You get out, you get back on drugs, you know, they fuck you over again, and then you end up back in jail, and this and that. And the I am fucked up. You cannot save me. I know you think that you can, but you can't, okay? So guard... Okay, I done had enough talking with my lawyer. I need to get out of here. So then we see Annalise and her counselor again, and they're talking, and he says, um, why are you helping her? And uh, Annalise was like, because, like I said, she kept me from getting my ass beat when I was in jail. You don't believe me? And he was like, nope, I really don't. You're lying. You're hiding be behind something. I can see that. So you either going to talk to me or you're going to get the hell up out this office. I said, ooh, counselor. You don't know who you're talking to, honey. Annalise is the master of keeping shit hidden, okay, and changing even your damn mind. So then we see Annalise, and she's down at the courthouse, and she's arguing with somebody. You know, she can't get these files or whatnot, so, okay, the shit is sealed, and they ain't giving it to her. And then a real nice Nate walks up. I said, ooh, 
Child, I sure wish Annalisa real nice and they could work they shit out. He says, I know that Bonnie is the mole for you. I don't really know what you guys are trying to do. And she was just like, I fired Bonnie. Bonnie doesn't work for me anymore. I didn't even know she worked down here until this morning. So you can get the fucking panties out of a bunch and quit being so damn worried and mad and upset and, you know, suspicious because I ain't doing nothing. He was like, well, why? Well, why did you fire her? And she was like, because she's better off without me. But, you know, real nice Nate, he's still trying to be a hard ass. He know he still love him some Annalise. So now the kids are all back together and they at the apartment. And then all of a sudden they start getting their callbacks. Okay, Michaela, I think Michaela got, what, five or three. And even Asher got a couple. Um, Connor didn't get any. And what about Laurel? Where is Laurel? Now we see Annalise and she's still trying to read through the cases of her um, girl that she's representing seeing how you know she was from 18 years old all the way up to present that she's been in and out of jail for different things prostitution uh drug you know theft robbery i mean she's just been running the gamut on being somebody that is out there in them streets but while she's looking at everything she finds a loophole like uh you know annalise does it seems that when she was 13 years old and she was arrested the judge gave her a freebie and let her out of uh jail annalise smiles to her and she says you know what that's gonna be your ticket out now, Connor actually, I think, got a call back for legal aid, all right, and he goes down there, and um, he don't get the job, to make a long story short, but they are also calling to talk to Laurel um, after Connor, and Laurel is not there, okay, so now Connor has to go and try to figure out where Laurel is. Laurel is still researching, okay, and trying to find out mystery deaths of Anatares or some shit like that, and, um, you know, some employees, the deaths, and I was just like, anything that has to do with Laurel, I just, I just, I don't even mentally process it, y'all, I'm sorry. Now, Bonnie, she calls Fine Ass Frank, okay, they trying to figure out if they gonna hook up for dinner or not, okay, she tells them how she bumped into Annalise down at the courthouse, you know, Annalise was trying to get these files, they wouldn't get them for her. Um, and how frustrated she was, but you know what, fuck, she don't work for Annalise no more, so she can't even worry herself about it. She gonna just get her ass drunk and go to fucking sleep. <laughs> I said, Bonnie, girl, it be like that sometimes. So then we see Michaela, and she is working her magic, you know, with one of the job prospects that uh, she's interested in. Uh, they're having a mixer. She and Asher are both there because they both was offered jobs from this this place and even the Indian. Okay, so while she's trying to schmooze with the people, she sees Asher and the Indian kid over there arguing. Okay, looking like it's getting tense and look like Asher is about to fuck him up. So she goes over there real fast, and she was like, okay, Asher, you remember what we were going to do? Okay, beast mode. Okay, take your ass away from over here going in the bathroom calm yourself down so asher leaves and then she tells the indian boy she says you keep up with this bullshit with me or my man it's gonna be some gospel singing and flower bringing baby you better ask somebody what i am capable of an old indian kid is looking at her like oh maybe old girl is serious yes yeah, she's very serious now Annalise is at home. It's nighttime, you know, and she's working on her case. I'm assuming she gets a knock at the door and it's fine ass Frank. You know, she's all like, she ain't gonna let him in. He was just like, you might as well let me in, Annalise. Okay, I got something for you. So she kind of opens the door to a crack a little bit and he gives her the files, you know, those sealed files that she was trying to get a hold of. And he was just like, wait a minute, Annalise. All creep mode ish and everything. I said, what? Why do they keep on making fine ass Frank so strange and weird? He was just like, <laughs> I'm going to be here all the time. Whether you want me around or not, I'm always going to be around to help you. Okay, so you might as well quit tripping and let me be your friend again. Okay, but Annalise closes the door on him. I said, girl, if he going to be doing all this strange ass, weird ass shit, you might as well let the nigga be your friend again. I mean, at least he'll be back on your side and you'll know what he's doing because he, he almost seemed like he crazy now. It's just, I mean, he always been crazy, but now he seemed like he might be crazy, crazy. <laughs> I guess he's ain't gonna take care of Annalise, so at least she knows she's not gonna get killed. We hear another knock at the door this time. It is Connor checking up on Laurel. Okay, she's at Wes's house. And he was just like, I was just down at Legal Aid and they was looking for you. Okay, why didn't you go? You know, because I don't want to. You know, just be an old baby ass bitch. It was just like, why not, okay? I know you upset about Wes, and don't say his name to me. Like, she the one that owns him or some shit. You motherfuckers together five minutes, and you act like you... 
Child, you would swear that she was on his retirement plan. Like they had had a whole fucking family and been on vacations together and everything. I said, oh my God. So she's all pouting and, you know, fussing at, at Connor. And he was like, listen, I feel just as bad as you do, maybe even worse, okay? Because I was there when he died and you could have died. And, you know, I feel guilty. And then she tries to let him off the hook a little bit. And she was like, there's nothing nobody can do. And it's not your fault. So stop trying to make yourself feel bad. Well, why don't you stop being a bitch to every fucking body? She get on my damn nerve. <laughs> now back in the present, Annalise is telling the counselor that she's not hiding herself at all. She's just telling him about herself. And he says, well, is this case that's so important to you? Do you see yourself in this woman? Okay, is that how you was treated back when you was 12 and 13 years old and growing up? And it happened to you. You feel like you've got to save her? And she was just like, no, that's not it at all. I mean, you know, when I was younger, I had a lot of shit happen to me bad. But, you know, my teachers always told me that I could be something good. And, you know, I believed it. But when we go back, we see Annalise. And uh, she is questioning the old judge in the case, the very first case, the very first time that her client was arrested okay when she was 13 years old and she tells the judge hey look i see that you um released her why did you do that and he was like because you know she was out there and it was more like a sex trafficking case and not really prostitution she was like well why didn't you let her off on sex process i mean sex trafficking he was like because it did it didn't really exist back then okay so i figured i would just let her go and seal the record so nobody else could see it and she was just like okay well that's all fine and good except that we had six or seven other kids that had the exact same experience as my client did um and you released them and then you sent them on to rehabilitation okay and like i said there's the exact same scenario except that they are all not black <laughs> all right they're all white my client was black so instead of you sending her to rehabilitation you turned her back out to the streets and that's why her life got fucked up after that okay you did not really help this girl so she talks about how she was in and out of jail and on drugs and prostitution and how the system failed her and how it's their fault that this woman has ended up where she is now she's a junkie she's in jail you know her life is ruined okay she couldn't get no type of help no type of aid okay and um, because of that because the system failed her so that not only should they drop this case that she's in right now but they need to drop all of her records um, and free her so that she can you know get a new lease on life and they take a little break her client tells her listen even if you know it doesn't happen, you know, you really did try and I appreciate it. Okay, but when they go back into court, the judge says, yeah, it was pretty fucked up what we did to you. You probably could have had a better life had we just sent you on the rehabilitation too. And as much as I would like to get rid of your record, I can't do that. But what I can do is I can seal everything up so nobody would ever see it and you can get out of jail and you would be free to go find a job and start you a new life. So Annalise has won. And so she tells her counselor that. Wasn't it funny when the counselor started to tell her um, how he used to be a drug addict back in the day and now he's changed his life for the better and she was just like, I wish you wouldn't have told me that. Incoming call from Dab Cell. Mobile, press you connect phone button to answer. Hello. Hey, Ms. how you doing? Hey, Dad. I'm fine. What's going on? What you doing? And he was just like, why not? She was just like, well, you know, remember I told you about the issues that I had when I was younger, okay? Well, I was talking to my counselor and, you know, instead of me telling him my problems, he started to open up and he started to tell me his problems and it was real nice because we had a real friendship there and we grew so close, um, he became my husband. <laughs> so I'm going to have to put the whammy down on that ass too. You, you keep on telling me all your shit. Because, honey, can't too many people resist all this that is Annalise. And I could fuck your life up, too. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time, all right, that I might be that one to turn your life out. And then that's when it jumps to two months later. And remember last week we saw when Fine Ass Frank was trying to calm Laurel down in the hospital. You know, where's my baby? Where's my baby? And that's when um, the counselor, you know, he's on his phone and he's trying to call Annalise. And he's like, where are you? She's awake now. Answer the damn phone. Okay, and then we see old Miss Cold Ass Bonnie walking into a crime scene. 
and uh, she's looking around this looks like it is Annalise's apartment that she was leasing and um, Annalise isn't there however there's blood everywhere there's blood in the elevator okay and on the wall okay look like some shit then went down and Annalise is missing I don't know what are you guys thinking about the season so far I'm more intrigued with the Annalise part than the Laurel part but I guess we'll see all right, you guys, let me get off of here. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rock Stars. Bye.